Good day, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, Making Camtasia Work for Your Teams. Uh, my name is Jason Villa, and I'm an instructional designer and master trainer here at TechSmith. I'm just getting the ball rolling today, and what the information I'm going to share is temporary for the beginning of the session, but you can take it through the rest of the session when you're going to be shared information by my good friends and coworkers, Mr. Troy Stein. Troy, welcome in. Welcome, welcome. Glad and, everybody's here. Absolutely. And Mr. Casey Sider. Casey, how are we doing today? Doing great. Glad to be here. Awesome. Awesome. These two gentlemen are going to share a lot of tips and tricks today, situational things where Camtasia can make your lives a little bit better, especially working collaboratively with small or large teams. It matters not. But before we get into their content, I'm going to just take you through a couple pieces of um, housekeeping as we get ourselves rolling. Let me go back to full screen. It's going to be easier that way. So first and foremost, the number one question we get asked in every webinar Hey, Jason, is this being recorded? Yep, this webinar is absolutely being recorded and you will get a link mailed to you to the same email you use to register for your webinar session in about 24 hours. If you're interested and you go to techsmith.com slash webinars, there is a link to the recordings page. There's probably a good chance I'll have it up there in a couple hours. So if you don't wanna wait for that email, it will be there. You can watch it as many times as you want, share it with your colleagues and friends and family, and maybe slow back down some parts, but maybe we go through to a little bit too fast so you can gain that knowledge. We are really lucky to have a couple of TechSmithies joining us in the background today. We have uh, Dro, affectionately known as Dro, Dave O'Rourke, and Alex Chapman here as part of the TechSmith team to answer your questions, which means if you have a question that you'd hope to get answered, we want you to put it in the Q&A section of the Zoom webinar interface. We can't promise we'll get to all the questions because there's a few hundred of you joining us today. Uh, but your best chance of getting those questions answered is to put them in the Q&A. Um, the chat is also open, as you've all found it. We're going to use that for casual conversation and banter. Uh, we won't be looking at the questions in chat. I'm just going to be very upfront. It's better for us to be able to focus on your questions in the Q&A. So Q&A, questions. We appreciate you. Thanks for doing that. Next thing's up, Zoom has a really great live transcription service. If you would find it helpful to have closed captions on on the bottom of your screen, you can toggle those on individually with the CC button at the bottom. It happens live, it's automated by Zoom, and it does a pretty good job. I'm actually surprised. It does a pretty good job of that live, so if you find that helpful, go ahead and toggle that on. Real quick, uh, some of you said you're on older versions of Camtasia. This is just an opportunity for you to scan a QR code if you're interested, because if you have an existing version of Camtasia and you want the newest version, you do save over 50% off of what the regular price is, and you will get yourself maintenance, which should take you through the next major release of Camtasia. So keep your eyes open for that. We can also put that link in the chat later on if you are interested. So... Last thing's not last, but it's the next thing is we've also released our, our Camtasia projects webpage, and we can talk about that later if you're interested. The projects are pretty sweet because you go into a webinar like this and you learn a bunch of awesome stuff from Casey and Troy, and you're like, what do I do with this information? These are guided step-by-step -step individualized video projects where you can start at the beginning and work through us with projects all the way through to the end at your own pace. Step-by-step. Step-by-step, totally free get after them, enjoy them, all kinds of different opportunities. So that being said, I'm going to pop out of my presentation, Troy, and stop sharing my screen and hand it off to the most capable hands of Mr. Troy Stein and Mr. Casey Sider. All right. While I, cool. Thank you, JV. Appreciate that. Uh, JV, um, uh, before I turn on my screen sharing, how about uh, Casey, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, absolutely. Hello, everyone. My name is Casey Sider. I am a customer success manager and just wanted to uh, do a quick ad for my services. Customer success is a program that we have where we work with you and your organization to make sure everyone gets the most out of our products. So that can include training, that can include departmental roundtables, that can include um, include deployment plans, promotional content to make sure that everyone is even aware that you have Snagit and or um, Camtasia. So the customer success team is here to help you. Uh, and um, I'm really excited to uh, join the webinar today for Camtasia for Teams. Try to take it away. It's nearly you, impossible sir. to put a price tag on the time and efforts and help that Casey and his team put forth. Uh, if you have not utilized the customer success team here at TechSmith, please do so. Gentlemen, enjoy your session, and we'll talk to you at the end. Sweet. 
Awesome. Thank you, Jason. We only got a couple of slides here, folks, just to let you know you're among friends. Uh, my name is Troy Stein. I was the product manager for Camtasia off and on again. Had the privilege of working with Dave O'Rourke for almost 20 years um, at TechSmith and uh, still love coming to work every day. Uh, so we have on this webinar registered 123 Camtasia users. 99 Snagit users, 24 Audiate users, 40 Asset Library users, and 33 Camtasia certified users. These are the people that have gone through the course to say, yeah, I'm a freaking ninja on Camtasia. You can prove it. Um, and we're going to today be spending our time on Camtasia 22.6. Time permitting, if you have questions about, well, what's Audiate, what's Snagit, et cetera, feel free to ask. Um, we'll hit, hit up those questions at the end. Uh, okay, let me start with one story and then I'll uh, explain and then I'm going to ask you which direction you want to go. Uh, uh, back in 2017, we began this process of building out Camtasia. Uh, we went into Stuttgart and we met with a company that is the equivalent of like CBS in Germany. At that organization, they had 300 reporters. As I was sitting in the office, I look outside the street and grabbing my phone, I take this photograph. They had one of their uh, one of their reporters out there and they had a sound person, the camera person. Uh, I don't know who these other people were, but uh, they, they had a group of people filming a, a segment for that day. What normally happens with those 300 people is they would then throw those videos over the wall to six professional video editors and the organization was finding that surprise surprise a ratio of 50 to 1 was kind of big and uh, they were saying look is there any way that we could put this video editing capability in the hands of the 300 reporters and it's got to be simple um, but we also because we're a company that cares a lot about our brand it has to be on brand so uh over the years, we built out functionality that allowed them to do just that. My question to you all, and please just put this in the chat. Um, where do you want to go first? Do you want to focus on making Camtasia simple so that other people in your organization can use it? Or do you want to go focus first on the branding side? How do you get everything branded and just perfect? So just in the chat, uh, go ahead and let me know. Do you want, uh, just put the word, uh, whoop, uh, the word simple or branded? Those two things, okay? And uh, let me pull up Zoom. Oh, yeah, we're getting a flood of responses here. Thank you, everybody. And what's it looking like, Casey? I, it's a close tie, but I would say I'm seeing more branded over simple. Branded it is. Okay, cool. Let's go to branding first. All right. So if we're going to go branding first, the, the best way to start is I'm going to go into Camtasia and there's uh, something called themes. What themes allows me to do as an organization is to stipulate, let me, we're going to be using Visualis as a fictional company here, uh, but it allows me to uh, stipulate my colors uh, for background colors, accent colors, etc. Allows me to uh, stipulate my default fonts that I use font one and font two, and the logo uh, that I use. If I happen to be a company that's got multiple themes, for example, I believe we've got a Snagit one theme and a Snagit two theme, or uh, you can have multiples uh, as necessary to uh, develop the variety of colors that you might want. But uh, that's the first way that this um, can benefit the branding because you can share this uh, with your team. Now, how this actually works from a branding perspective is if I, let's say, have some annotations and you may not know this, but the annotations are kind of filtered. We've got basic and bold and abstract. But if I go to all, there's a lot of them, lots and lots in here. But what I can do is I can choose my theme and say visualist, please. And in a heartbeat here, they're going to all show up with the appropriate branding. And from here, I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Now I see this. Uh, maybe don't like that thought bubble call out. Um, may, but all my, all my fonts uh, have the right fonts associated with them. And uh, being able to get down to something that is on brand for our users is a really good theme. It is a really good thing for us. Okay. 
So let's say, uh, in fact, that uh, this is this is the kind of uh, let me zoom in on the timeline just like that. Let's say that this is the type of call out that I uh, am interested in, and maybe in here um, I'm going to say. I kind of would like actually i'm going to use a, a a color i'm going to use the dark color as the border of that outline and i'm going to uh i'm going to grow that out a little bit right with that small tweak in place uh, then i can hit the plus sign here and that's going to add that as a preset now it automatically went into the ones here called users and uh, from here, now that I've got this as, as a preset, I can uh, click it and do, 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 do. Is that working? No. Huh. I must have done something wrong on that one. The idea is that you should be able uh, to click it and hit a star there. I'm not sure why that one is not giving me the, the star on that one. So that's kind of weird. Uh, but once you've started then it will show up here in the favorites and the favorites also can be shared so you can be able to share the branded text or shapes or transitions and we'll get into the favorites uh, in just a little bit the other thing that you can do is you can build a library now Camtasia itself comes with a wonderful and really impressive library in Camtasia 2022 over a thousand different assets in here everything from music that you can choose from to uh, rich uh, call outs uh, for example let me just bring up like one of these so there's and you can play it back right you can see that you've got some uh, some great richness in here but if I brought that one down, this one just by default happens to be yellow, right? Uh, that's the default there. But I can go again to my theme here, choosing Visualis. The theme does a lot of heavy lifting for us. And I can say, yeah, let's let's use actually the orange color, not the, the red color. And now that I'm looking at that text there, that's going to be a little bit uh, dark. I'm going to go and change this text to, uh, we'll just get, have that be, be the white color. And we'll use a, a, a slightly darker text there or bolder text. So now that I've got that one, locked and loaded. Uh, I've got this library here, Camtasia 2022, but I can go and create my own library as I've created here called Visualis. And forgive me, I, I realize I got a ton of libraries there. But in here, now that I've uh, made some modifications to this callout or to any asset here, uh, I can right click this and I'm going to just rename this one. And I'm going to call this one um, left, uh, yeah, left to right call out. No, I'm not sure that's the right name, but left to right call out. And then one more time, I'm going to add that to my library. So it'll sorry, ask me. Can I just, uh, sorry, just to jump in yeah, here for, for just it. a second. I, I just wanted to clarify. So I think this is so cool and it's easy to kind of skip over the functionality here. So Troy just brought a prepackaged like animation or special effect down into Camtasia and then with one click converted it to his branding colors. So he switched it to a certain company's branded colors. He could have switched it to a department's different branded colors Great and he call. can keep doing that. Then what he's doing is packaging that up to share it with the rest of his team, which we're going to see in a second. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just wanted to slow no. you down just for a second. No, that's there. perfect. And, okay. and by all means, please slow me down at any time. And folks, if you got questions or if I'm going too fast or you're like, oh, this, this thing over in the corner looks interesting, feel free to pause me. Um, I don't want to go any faster or any slower than you want me to go. So by making those adjustments to this, and, and the idea here is that there's probably within this group, a few people that are pretty confident. The fact that a whole bunch of you are Camtasia certified is awesome. Uh, that tells me that you pretty, you know your way around it. The idea is that you can be like the sheriff and the other users in the organization can be the deputy so that you can create this library and then they can receive your library. They can receive the branding from you. So let's assume that we've got this one and maybe a whole bunch of others nailed down. I simply add that to my library and it's going to show up over here uh, in this library. I've already created some folders. I can create folders. I can create subfolders and sub subfolders. 
Uh, I can also move this one, since this is a callout, I can move that up into the callout folder. In case you didn't know, um, you can go fairly vibrant uh, with some of the calls. For example, here's a, a call out that we made that actually has a motion background in it. This happens to be new in Camtasia with what we call blend modes. But if I'm a cloud based company, I could have clouds moving in that background. But you can stipulate a great level of design and color and branding associated with uh, everything from titles to call outs to um, to uh, intros, outros, uh, backgrounds, etc. Let me give a, one other example in here. Let's say that I'm going to go out of the Visualis library and I'll go back into the standard Camtasia 2022 library. In here, uh, let's say that we are looking for a title. And in the titles, there's uh, something, I think, uh, yeah, let's use uh, this one called Boxy Banner Wipe. And it looks like this. Okay, one more time, I'm gonna go and select my theme here. And, whoop, and it looks like that. Of course, I don't really want uh, Camtasia 22. Uh, I'm gonna call it uh, Visualis Opener. Oh, no, we'll just call it Visualis, right? And if I want to, I'll maybe make some adjustments either to the horizontal spacing. So I've got, I can space out my text a little bit and uh, maybe even increase the size a little bit. But I've, because I use my theme, my, uh, my fonts are all already uh, locked and loaded. So I'm, I'm good to go there. And as I did before, I can add that library uh, to, I'm not gonna call it Boxy, I'm gonna call it the Visualis. And we wholly expect you and want you to take things from our library and make them yours if they work for you. You can make them from whole cloth and Camtasia has become a, an increasingly powerful design tool as well, especially with the track mats um, and the motion blurs. You can do a ton with Camtasia now that maybe you couldn't do before. But now I've got that and now it's in my library here. Uh, did I just say that to the wrong library? I think I did. Casey, let me try that one more time. so gonna... many libraries. I know. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Way too many. Okay. Visualis. Um, Visualis. And we do, we, we work with organizations and help them um, create their libraries. That's what the enterprise uh, customer success team does. We can help you uh, build. Oh, and just like that. This is the joy of working. I happen to have beta software running, uh, so <laughs> I apologize. Uh, but uh, if you ever have something crash on Camtasia, thankfully it uh, saves. I think I have mine set to save every 30 seconds or so. Yep. And so, and so for me, I uh, do a lot of trainings myself. And <laughs> Camtasia always seems to crash when you're doing a live training with a lot of happens. people that are attending. Um, yeah. But yes, this is a great opportunity to pitch that auto save. I have it saved for every 60 seconds. And you can find that in the editor under preferences. Yep. The uh, and uh, we do have, like I said, I've, I've got uh, beta software running because we've got Camtasia 23 coming up at the end of April. And uh, let me pause that there. And uh, the untitled is coming back up. It looks like somebody raised the hand. Uh, Casey in the in the chat. Is that possible? I'm not sure. Sorry to, to for a uh, for a question. I, I'm, I looks like, uh, I wasn't sure. Um, uh, I just got a notification from zoom, but alas, oh, uh, so, yep. so we're back here and, uh, we go back into our libraries and from the libraries, we can see that, uh, we've got now the boxy banner wipe is here. Uh, again, one of the beauties of, despite uh, the crashes, you don't really lose anything, which is really wonderful. Okay, now um, we've got the the library. We've got uh, I've even gone in from the Camtasia twenty twenty two library, and in the twenty twenty two library, I mean, like I said, a thousand some odd assets in here. But one of the beauties is that you can go into this library here. You can find the things that are valuable to you. So let's say, for example, uh, fills and, uh, and gradients. Uh, let's choose a, a simple gradient over here. Maybe we'll bring this one down onto the timeline. And I might say, hmm, green, nice, but I'm, I'm not really a green guy. Let's use my, my company colors. And I can go, well, it offers up the orange and the red, but what if we went from the dark blue 
blue to the lighter blue and say, okay, that looks pretty good, right? And yet again, I can save those. The, the beauty here is that you can create your own library. Yeah, the Camtasia 2022 library gives you a ton of building blocks, which is great. And we want you to customize what's already there. But moreover, we want you to make something that is specific to your own. So feel free to spend time in that library uh, today so that you can become familiar what's with what's in it. But once you've got your own here, uh, you've got the ability to organize it and ultimately to share it. We're going to talk about sharing at the end. One of the things that you'll notice in here is that I've kind of got some call outs in here and I've got some titles now in here and I've got a lower third. I've got some uh, background gradients. You're noticing that I'm trying to assemble in here the things that everything, kind of everything that you might need for for working on a project what we're trying to do here folks we are trying to create a focus that will allow you to say look we're going to teach new users camtasia they're going to learn how to record sure i get it they're going to learn how to use the library um, because it's got pretty much everything you're going to need and we're going to teach them how to use the favorites and what the favorites does is it allows me to say yeah uh, th this is the text that that i use a lot um here are the shapes that i tend to use a lot here are the transitions that i use a lot like uh, a simple slide into the left for text or slide into the right for text or a spotlight effect i love media mats i love motion blurs but you can have these favorites not just be your favorites, they can be the favorites for everybody else. The idea here, folks, is you can go from saying, yeah, there's about 13 tools over here in Camtasia to saying, you know what? All you have to know is that there's a favorites, there's media, and there's library. And we've put everything in those three tabs for you. That's all you need to know. Because frankly, even though we've got amazing transitions and I love them, there's 130 of them here. All I have to do is say, oh, I'm going to add that to my favorites. And now it's over there. And with now with that new favorite, uh, favorited transition over there, nobody has to spend time. No new user has to spend time figuring out what transition they should use because you can share those favorites with everybody else. Okay. And for just now, to jump in here, I just wanted to say as well that this is a really, really great way to make onboarding for new users super, super easy. As Troy was just saying, package up the basics, package up what people you know are using for a particular project and send just that to them. So they're not getting bogged down because as a trainer, the number one thing that I hear is that Camtasia is sometimes a little intimidating for new users. There's too right. many bells and whistles right so this is a great yep. way to, to to really put a focus on the functions at hand as troy was saying i appreciate you putting that finer point on it because casey it is um just by the nature for some people they might look at this and say oh wow uh let's see i've got tools i've got a canvas i don't know what to do with the canvas and and heavens you know there's properties over here and what am i supposed and a timeline oh my gosh right but that being said video editing has come a long way the number of people who have used video editors before goes up and up and up and camtasia is historically and even today still one of the easiest to use video editors um what as rated by non um as rated by the general population so it's a good thing but we can still make it simpler let me show you how uh, i can go to new project from template and from template i can say uh let's choose for the visualist company uh we're going to choose three-step uh training we're, let's say there's an internal training program and i can open up a new project from that template also by the way you can get rid of templates here that you don't want. Everything in Camtasia is deletable uh, so that you can make it as simple as you like. Let me uh, scroll this back a little bit so you can see in here that what we've got here is a little introduction. Okay, and that then leads to the first title sequence. And that then leads to our first placeholder. So if somebody were to come in here 
and say, sorry, I'm going to just move some of my zoom controls over a little bit. If somebody were to say, uh, come and open up this new project, they might go in and click on the first clip. And we would say, folks, it's pretty simple. Click on it clip by clip. And you go through here and you can put a new title in here. Uh, let's call it um, pilot training and uh, for Mach 3 or you know, whatever it is that you're writing on here. And I can also go and say, oh, we like JV, but now it's time for, uh, let's put Jonathan Boyle up here. We're going to drag Jonathan's face onto JV. And now JV, oh, we've got a little bit of, oh, that's interesting. So the, uh, I did a, a corner rounding effect that didn't quite work out with, uh, with uh, Jonathan Boyle, but that's all right. We can go back in here and we'll turn the uh, corner rounding effect off. We'll turn that off. There we go. And uh, I might just move that up ever so. There we go. So now we got that one right. Um, so you can put it in here so that people can go in and modify text, a few images maybe, and put a new name on here. So this one happens to be uh, Jonathan Boyle, a friend of mine. And uh, then we've got now the, uh, we've got a intro sequence. So the the title for the first chapter, we've got a title for the second chapter, we've got a title for the third chapter, and we've got an outro at the end here. All these folks need to do is once they've gone and made modifications to the text, like, okay, what is the, what is the title that I want to put in here? Let's say um, mock 11 training, uh, you get the idea of, of how easy it is for them to make modifications to these presentations. At that point, we go and they can either make their recording and drop it in here, or as I've done, I've gone to the library and I've, from the uh, library.techsmith.com, I brought in just some stock footage here and I will bring that down and drop that onto this placeholder. By dropping onto the placeholder, I simply ripple replace and uh, it, I now have that footage here. I, maybe I scale that up a little bit so people can see it. I, it just happens to be aircrafts here. Uh, whether that's a screen recording or aircraft footage, it doesn't matter. The other thing that's really nice about this, by the way, is we have built this project such that you'll see as I ripple replace this, that uh, you know it's going to say, do you want to go to 60 frames a second? Because that's what that one was filmed at. But also I can drop them in here and with every time I ripple replace, the timeline automatically expands. And what's nice in this is the, uh, the transitions stay in place here, right? Uh, wow. And uh, that is because in this project we have created, uh, we've used the magnetized track. The magnetized track was built or that feature was built specifically so that you could hand off a project for other people without uh, them having to uh, worry, let's say that, um, uh, without them having to worry that, oh gosh, this, uh, this outro uh, state, you know, was, was stuck down here because this video that they dropped on was shorter. Having the, having the longer or, excuse me, having longer or shorter videos with the magnetization, it doesn't matter. Everything snaps back and you've always got a nice tight timeline that way. So then okay. most of this is really just pre-built. Like somebody could just come in here and all they would 100%. have to do is make the actual recording, drop it in, and they're good to go. Right. That's the idea. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. So so they the first thing they do and the simplest thing they do is modify some text. Right. That's and they do that here in this quick properties window. You can build this was built. Uh, all I did with this intro here is I simply built this base off of a PowerPoint slide. And it's like, oh, OK. And so we got like a box and some gray and some text in there. Um, simple enough. And, and you kind of replicate that inside of Camtasia uh, or simply import it. And and then you make room for text placeholders up here. But uh, in this layout, you can you can create these these quick property assets. Is let me uh, let me uh, zoom in on this asset right here. 
this intro here, if I click plus, I'm going to open that group. And the reason that we've built these groups is it allows you as a designer to do anything you want, like to put some music in there or to put a call out maybe with the name of the presenter um, or uh, to put a picture of somebody or no picture. Right. Uh, or, you know, some text in here, all of this, uh, all of these groups allow you to just pile in stuff. But when it's time for you to make it simple for somebody, Right. I can go in here and create this thing called a quick property asset. This quick property asset allows me uh, to choose what I want to have in there, what I want to expose. For example, do I want people you might have, have seen in here that there is that background photo of of the planes? Do I want people to be able to change that out? Nope, I don't. But if I did, um, I could put a plus sign up there. And now that plus uh, that photograph is going to go into the options over here for people to swap out and edit. If I don't want them to edit it, I simply hit the red remove that property and away that goes. Similarly, I might do the same thing with the logo. It's like, you know what? I don't want people to play around with my logo. My logo is set in stone. You all don't get to play with that. That is done. But you can set the colors, you can set the fonts, and just allow people to make modifications to the text itself. Any questions on that that I need to be aware of? Great. Uh, thank you for walking through the quick property editor. We are getting some questions, but there, there's a lot of questions about the ripple replace and the other options. Could you just go over that? What is 100%. ripple yeah. replace? And then what are some of the other uh, choices there that you sure. saw? Yeah, let me, uh, I'll just clear off this uh, entirely. I'm gonna hit the letter P on my timeline. Letter P adds, gives me an opportunity to put a, a, a placeholder in here. I think uh, I created a, a preference so that my placeholders are only five seconds. I think that's all this is thereabouts, okay? Uh, if I drag in some footage, let me open up, uh, well, let's just do this. I'll drag on this Shutterstock file. And if I was gonna just put it on the timeline, you can already tell that it is longer than the place uh, the placeholder. If I drag it and hold it on top of the placeholder, then let's, uh, and I let go. By the way, it turns green down here, so you know that we're kind of green is good to go. So I'll, I'll uh, let go. and. Now I've got some options. First, uh, Ripple Replace is going to replace the placeholder with the full length of that video. Boom. Okay, so now I've got that placeholder, which was only five seconds, now has made room on that clip for 30 seconds. Let me undo that. Let's go to the other one. Right click, bring it down, or left click, bring it down, and I'm going to let go. Replace from the start is going to give me keep this thing at five seconds, but it's only going to give me the first five seconds of that clip. So uh, zooming in on the timeline here a little bit. So that's just the first five seconds of it. If I bring this down and I uh, take a look at replace from the end, it's only going to give me the last five seconds. There we go. And undoing one more time, the this one is clip speed. This is, the clip speed is really cool because I might say build a template for software demos. And I'm like, these feature demos are only 30 seconds. We're going to have a 10 second clip, another 10 second clip, and another 10 second clip. If you recorded 20 seconds, replacing with clip speed is going to take that 20 seconds and it's going to turn it into 10. In this case, this uh, clip here is going to fit inside of here. And that fast fly flying plane is looking like it's flying even faster uh, because it's now going five, it's going to be five seconds long cool all right uh let's any other questions there casey that i need to hit on nope i think we are good to move on actually all right excellent so folks one more time uh favorites media library you can build out a library you can build out your favorites so that it is almost all your users need uh and to learn you can make it even simpler by using a template excuse me <clears throat> All right, so we have uh, also talked about uh, themes. We've got temp templates, which you can manage. 
So you can go in here and say, uh, I like Brooks's template, but just not really what I need in here. Um, so I'm going to delete that. Um, this uh, Burns broadcast packaging template, don't need that. What we want you to be able to do is clean up a version of Camtasia for yourself, build a, a favorites for yourself, build a library for yourself, and then templates for yourselves and themes for yourselves, and then be able to share it. Okay, the way that you share this with others in your organization is by doing something called a package from the file menu, you can go to export and package. Now in the package, you can choose the templates that you want to share with others. For example, I think I had, uh, what did I have the three step? What did I say? Do, 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 do. There we go, three-step uh, training Visualis, another internal training from the Visualis company, etc. I can choose the theme that I want, my Visualis uh, theme. I've got a library that is related to Visualis, and heck, I can even do shortcuts, right? Like if you, this happens at some of the larger organizations that have hundreds and hundreds of, of people trained on Camtasia, is that they tell them we've we've customized the presets for the splits or the the uh, the presets for um, jumping to the next clip or any of the myriad of things that you can create custom uh, shortcuts for, and uh, we're going to add in our favorites as well. And then I simply go to export. Now that package here, I'm uh, gonna call this one the Visualis package, uh, will show up on, on my finder here. And anybody on Mac or window, Windows who uses that package, all they have to do is double click it and that package is ready to go. You might notice here that I've got uh, one other thing here called libzip. I went, I went for the full Monty, so to speak, with this package. The package, uh, as I, uh, whoops, let me close a couple of these things out. Uh, by going to the and exporting a package, I can choose to export a template, a theme, a library, a shortcuts. I can put it all together. But I can also do something like go to my library, my Visualis library, and say, you know what? Uh, all I need to do is I just need to give somebody uh, that library. And you can do that. You can just give them that library or heck, you could even go into that intro and say, right click and export that one asset. So you can give them drop by drop if you want. You can just give them the intro or you can give them the library or you can give them the package. Our goal here is to be able to give you as much flexibility as you need to. As I mentioned before, you can also give multiple libraries. So if you're, um, what do I know? Audi and you have multiple brands. You've got uh, Audi owns Maserati or no Lamborghini, I think, as, as well as Ducati, right? You can be able to deliver uh, multiple libraries that can work throughout your organization or library uh, per product. Yeah, hey, JP, go Quick for it. Question. Uh, so you were talking about sharing individual assets like the, 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 airplane. this intro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, let's look at the Shutterstock one above it, the, the jet. Plane. Okay. Can you yeah. read someone people are asking Louise is like can you rename that before you share it with somebody is there a way to do it Great question um there we go rename ba boom so we're going to call this one flying with JV and go. and then go ahead and and share it out yeah yeah and as a, as an example the customer education team that I'm a part of we do this all the time right we build intros for our tutorials intros for our webinars we will selectively yep. share things with our teams. More often than not, we will create a package like Troy was showing. I always call it like shopping in your uh, pantry. You can yes. pick out all the things you need for a particular recipe because they're always there ready to be shared. 100%. Now, one of the things that I we did for this is um, because I didn't want you to feel like, oh my gosh, I got to start from scratch. Whether or not you love this or you're like, eh, it's okay, or this might be amazing, is I've created a branded library for you. Uh, so that it's got, let's just say, uh, it's got some callouts on here. And these uh, callouts show up like this. If you have a different branding that you want to apply to it, great. Um, the, the branding, uh, all these can be easily adjusted for you. Callouts, we've got cursor effects, we've got some list views. So if there's, let's say, uh, you wanna sh show a list that shows up on, on part of the screen and it kinda goes, 
there we go, right? Um, or lower thirds or sidebars or titles, etc. All of this will, I'll share a link to this with you at the end. Uh, the goal here, as with all of this, is for you to be able to make modifications to these and to use the quick property assets here on the left to get her done. All right, last thing I wanted to uh, talk to you about at the end is the following. Um, as Casey mentioned, for our enterprise customers, uh, we do have uh, the customer success at techsmith.com. We can help customize the product. We can help customize the training for you. Um, we've got a couple of questions, which I'll hit on in just a second, but let me uh, suggest before anybody leaves, here's my challenge to you. Uh, schedule some time. Put something on your calendar today. Make time to make a theme. Make time to play and build a library or to customize the quick properties or to save something to your library. If you do not use what you learned today, it will fall off within a couple of days. So put just 30 minutes on your calendar to revisit this. I'm going to give you this link here, bit.ly slash Camtasia for Teams. That will have access to that library, that branded library that I just showed you. Um, it will give you links to downloads um, as well as a five-day challenge and some more things. So the, the library that I just showed you is there. But for now, we've got a couple of questions that came up. Uh, thank you, Casey, for being my partner in crime here in JV2. Uh, first, how can teams collaborate on the same? Oops, sorry about that, folks. Uh, can uh, Camtasia team or people collaborate on the same video? Uh, first, the question, the answer to that one is the way we define collaboration is delegation. Uh, so our, in an ideal world, you can give somebody a template and they can add their recording to a template. So you create the structure, you create the branding for them. Alternatively, you can, you can say, hey, can you send me a recording of X? And somebody within Camtasia can do a recording. Uh, let's, let me just do a quick one here. And uh, let's say I'm going to do that recording. I'll do it with a little bit of a voice. Actually, let's do that. There we go. I'll do a, a quick recording here. And I walk myself through that recording process, testing one, two, three. I stop my recording and it will open up in Camtasia. This is what I would do is I would uh, go to, let's see, let's go by date added. And... I think we are to do, do, do okay so I would then have them go and right click and uh, show in finder which is reveal in finder or the same thing on on Mac or on Windows you can see it and then have them send that to you so you can delegate the recording have them either they can work on the project themselves or if necessary you can have them send you a recording so that you can work on it that way in terms of having two people work on a project at the same time not something that uh, camtasia is built for just yet and i just realized that i stopped sharing my screen all right uh let's go back to desktop and back over here so how does one get training from casey and his team uh Best way is customer success at techsmith.com. Uh, hello, I have Camtasia and Snagit, but not Audi. Am I able to edit audio with Audi? Yes, we'll get to that in just a second. We date our we date stamp our libraries uh, because it's continuously evolving. Uh, for example, um, example would be that's a great point. Yeah, yeah. I I thought this was an interesting one. I was curious what your take on that was. Right. Um, so my take on it is uh, you're working the hard way because Camtasia isn't ready for you yet. Like in an ideal world, honestly, um, Camtasia would, those libraries would automatically stay up to date, but we're not really cloud. Uh, we've, we've taken a very um, cautious stance because we work with large organizations, including militaries and, and governments and, and, and tech companies and, and the cloud connections aren't necessarily um, historically haven't been uh, something that they were willing to go for. Uh, so, but uh, I think there's room for us to grow, to make our libraries so that they are always up to date. Yeah, we, uh, we do this on a regular basis too, to be honest, Troy. We have yeah. a, so on our team, we have a, we use Dropbox amongst many tools, right? Right. And we have a folder when we're in the midst of making tutorials, so at Camtasia release time, Audi 8 release time, Snagit release time, 
and we just designate one person on our team to keep them up to date. So if uh, there you go. I'm keeping them up to date, Casey's like, hey, I got a brand new intro. I'm like, great, let's send it up. Tell me what it's named and I'll put it where it belongs. It is not uh, eloquent, but it is effective until we get to the point where exactly what you describe happens because we still have to get work done, right? We, we can't always wait for the perfect perfect situation. Good call. Uh, one of the questions there was, how can, can Troy show us how to align stuff? Let's just, let's use this frame here and say that I want to uh, go into my favorites. By the way, F for favorites um, is fantastic. Uh, so I'm going to put on a little bit of text up here. And let's say that I wanted to put a, a couple bits of text on here. Let's say, um, we're going to call this one fly. And I'll put another one, copy and paste. Uh, Hold on, copy, paste, and I'll bring, whoop, come on, Troy. There we go. Let's do that. Okay. Copy, paste, there we go. And this next one, um, and we'll say this one fast. Okay. Now, uh, one of the cool things in Camtasia in the latest version is that I can go and I can enable Canvas rulers. What rulers allow me to do is I can go on here and say, you know, I probably shouldn't have text going to the very end, uh, but I can grab up here on any one of these rulers and say, let's have, let's kind of create a little bit of structure down here uh, to see where my ruler should be. I'm going to have a little bit of text here. So cool. Now that I've got my rulers, all I need to do is take my text and I'm going to resize it a little bit let's scale it down and i'll have it uh, i'll have it start just over there right and the fast i'll also bring up a little bit uh, and i'm going to bring that so that that also fits kind of in the middle of my items that way. So the rulers help quite a bit. I can also just right click and remove all the rulers because there is another option by holding it down. Um, I can kind of get a sense, these yellow lines help me to get at least some idea of, of where they uh, where my fit might be like if I was going to bring that up here you can kind of see that the yellow line snaps in when the two callouts sort of get to the same place um, anyway so th there's a handful of options there okay um, Troy there is one question that just came in that you could use this same uh, Shutterstock things for um, yeah they were just asking what if I have can I stack more than one video file on top of each other on the tracks in Camtasia or am I limited to just one for example if I have two versions of the same video and I screwed up one part of one can I stack one on top of it so that it takes the place of it so to speak a stack is well l let's just stack this one for a second yeah. let's let's um let's do this we're gonna go and copy and i'm gonna paste it so i've got the same thing twice except on this one what i'm going to do is i'm going to like make a pop out of this video so i'll go to my favorites and i'm going to uh create put a, a circle on top of this Bear with me for just a second while I do this. And then also for my favorites, um, because I use this tool all the time, I'm going to use Media Mat. Okay. Um, and I'm going to use this circle one more time on here, copy paste. And on this one here, uh, I'm simply going to put uh, our pet opacity is down, but I've got this. Okay. So watch this, folks. Uh, now, uh, what I've got is I've got the original and I've got this group. I'm going to scale this up so that I might be able to uh, be able to draw people's attention, even though this thing is moving here, right? I've got sort of this magnifier look uh, going inside of the video. The way that I did that is I copied the video. I put a circle on top of it to kind of create a mask. With that mask, I used something called media mat. The media mat was one of those things that I favorited. I went into the visual effects. There are a bunch of beautiful visual effects in Camtasia. You don't want your new users playing around with them, to be honest. Um, but you, those folks that are probably a little bit more advanced, can figure out how this stuff works. And I used the visual effects. I use it so darn often that uh, it's simply part of my favorites. And I drag that on there. 
and then I simply created a, another circle with a uh, with a border on it. That's all that is. Uh, but you can, yeah, you can layer on uh, images and videos to your heart's content. Is that did that answer the question, JB? I believe so. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Last thing uh, was an audio question. Let me go into my library here because I'm pretty sure I put uh, in our visualis library. I think I put some recordings on here of Troy talking about, I don't know what the heck I was talking about. It doesn't really matter, uh, but all of about three or four seconds in this video. Now, um, in, if I, uh, click in here you see my audio i can go in edit in audiate over here uh, it's going to ask me to first save camtasia which is fine uh, we'll just do a a little uh test uh over here to save it and it's going to affect a round trip the beauty of audiate is twofold one is it is going to allow me to easily improve the quality of my audio by allowing me to uh, remove noise at an incredible um, uh, level uh, with the plugins. It's also going to take out every one of my ums and my ahs uh, from from there. And then it's even going to send back a it's going to send back a clean audio file. It's also going to uh, allow me to make those edits with the beauty of simple text. Okay, so it's uh, going and creating uh, a text here. The problem is that there's not enough information. The problem is it is it's too much. So this is pretty good. Uh, if and I can listen to this here. The problem is it's too much. I'm sure were you guys able to hear that at all? Not sure if that played back. JV, did did yes. the audio come yeah. through? Okay. Yep, yep, all right. Yep. Good, good, good. All right. So um I can simply go and remove some audio or by selecting the text and I hit delete, and it just cut that audio and video for me. If I want to, I can go in here and I can remove uh, background noise. I can level up the audio. I can get rid of plosives or S's or whatever it is that may have been wrong with this. And I can send this back to Camtasia. Now, let me just show one other project really quick that uh, might be uh, more relevant. Uh, this one here. Uh, so this happens to be a CEO of, of a company and he talks like a normal human, right? Which most of our subject matter well, experts are. Um, I think, I, I think just to be slightly more accurate, we, we've generally speaking, um, started, uh, only okay. So this guy was struggling that day, but the, the beauty of this is not only can I go and say, let's get rid of all the hesitations. And it automatically gets rid of all the ums and the ahs, etc. But I can also go through here and say, you know, uh, well, I think I think just to be slightly more accurate, we've generally speaking, we've started just by looking at the text. I can simply say, you know what, I can start this whole thing with by deleting this section here. I don't even have to listen to it. I can just read it. We started by owning pretty well every company. That was fast. That edit was easy. I didn't have to go and scrub through the audio and hope that I find it. Or where he says, so we start, we start. Um, I can say, okay, let's take out. We don't need two, we start, we start. So I'll just take out this one here. So here we go. Pretty well. Let's see. Pretty well every company. So we start with 100%. Perfect, right? And then, and then uh, you know, so you can see how easy it is to edit the audio and and then you simply send it back to Camtasia and when you send it to Camtasia you can just send the audio or you can send it right back to the timeline that it came from it keeps all the edits it keep it sends back captions um, for me it, this is like a jetpack uh, for uh, for Camtasia okay we are uh, way uh, beyond time here let me uh, go back to our slides and say thank you uh, please Take a moment, uh, schedule some time, put it on your calendar. If you're one of those enterprise organizations, reach out to us at customer success at texma.com. Uh, use the library that I've I've built for you so that you've got something to get a kickstart with. And if you've got any questions or you're thinking ah, maybe there's probably a better way to do these webinars or different topics, uh, JV is going to be sending off a webinar to you in, or excuse me, he's going to send off an email. Uh, 
so that you can give us feedback on how we did and what we can do better because we're always looking to, to learn a few new things. Actually, it won't even be an email. The moment they leave today's webinar, they'll be prompted with a one minute, four question survey. It takes you literally less than a minute. We read these. I'm actually looking at it right now. No one's filled it out just quite yet. It's how we developed these webinars. It's how we came up with the make Camtasia work for your teams. It's how we came up with learn one new thing. It's how we've added all these new audio webinars. We, as a team, read through them. We appreciate you taking the time to not only attend the webinar, giving us feedback and participating, but being a part of the experience overall. Awesome. Thanks, folks, for being JB, Casey. Thanks for being my partners in crime here today. Thank you, Dave and Alex. You guys have been awesome. Appreciate all you guys spending time with us today, uh, especially those who have come from different time zones. It's wonderful having you. I happen to love Camtasia. And if I went too fast, it's simply because I get kind of passionate about it. I think it is an amazing tool. It has grown to be powerful. And yet at the same time, it really hasn't gotten any more complicated than it was five, 10 years ago. So kudos to Dave and the team for uh, keeping it pretty simple. JB, back to you, sir. Anything else? I'm good. Uh, like I said, look for those registrate or the registration email that'll have your recording link. Always go to textment.com slash webinars. Look for Troy's face. Look for Casey's face. Look for my face. Find all the different <laughs> events you want to join. Thanks for being a part. We'll see you next time through. <laughs> thanks, oh, everybody. And, and our thanks, of course, to Dro and Alex in the background for helping us out with all the questions they answered. Uh, more than a couple baker's dozens of these with the number of <laughs> Sorry, people. So. Did you see did you see Matt Matt's comment? He's like, oh by the way, Camtasia has a scream recorder. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> so very interestingly, we are not prescriptive in the way you use Camtasia. I teach no. a lot of the screen recording side. Troy teaches how to bring in content and make a video. And guess what? You can do both really easily, really professionally. Yeah. Camtasia. So awesome. <laughs> all right, folks. Thanks, thank everybody. you very much. Take all right. Care. See you guys. Uh, Troy and or Casey, you guys will have to end it for all because I left as a host. Ah, thank awesome. So all right. Cool. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, Joe, for being here. Appreciate it, man. See ya.